So, you've made the important life decision to start vlogging your uninteresting life. You're gonna plan on shooting such films as vacuuming your mother's living room and teaching your cat how to poo in the toilet. Well, you're gonna need a camera for that. And that's what I'm here for. Today we talk about what's the best system right now for video and we'll rank each company from worst to best and give the pros and cons of each company that we're gonna learn today. We're gonna learn a lot. I'll give you the budget hobo version as well. An M50. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. So keep in mind, this is for YouTube hobos. You might be walking outside filming yourself or in a boring ass living room. Studio, I mean. That's a studio right there. This is for one man crews here that just need the camera to work. It has to be easy. This is the focus. It's not all oh, of this has the best image quality, 10 bit. Nobody gives a flying raccoon shit hat what your colors look like in the video. Just focus on bringing joy to people's lives and have them not click off your video in the first 35 seconds. You might be onto something. So we start off today on the Panasonic G9 with the Laowa 7.5mm Tony 2. To illustrate a point, if you are gonna choose Panasonic cameras, which made the bottom of my list of hobo losers, you better be on that manual focus train to hell. Now keep this in mind, I'm ranking the companies from worst to best, but honestly, each camera, you, it could be the best for you. Panasonic could be your best system. I'm just kind of joking here, but just for YouTube hobos, autofocus is kind of important and Panasonic is the worst of the bunch. Eventually, there's gonna be pulsing in that background. It's gonna annoy your viewers. They're gonna be like, what is, what's happening with your Christmas light? Uh, uh, a seizure, you're gonna kill somebody if you use a Panasonic system, that's all I know for sure. Ironically, Panasonic is the best for video when it comes to features. They always have their 10-bit 4K 60, they never overheat, amazing IBIS. The screen is perfect, good touch screen, everything about it, good preamps. It's like the best, they focus on usability. When I turn this camera on, it said, oh, do you wanna change your focal length for the IBIS? It was at 28 mils. Oh God, oh, don't do it. I notice IBIS does weird things when you're upside down. It doesn't like that. Yeah, it didn't plan ahead, did you? If you have the GH5S or the S5 now, you get the waveform monitors. Like they have so many video features. They are the perfect video camera, but because they slack in the autofocus camp, the FEMA camps, where they torture you with bread, bread torture, look it up. I just can't recommend Panasonic for video knowing that you're probably needing autofocus and it's gonna hunt and it's gonna annoy me if I watch your videos. I ain't planning on being annoyed, so F you. But if you were to choose the Panasonic system for some reason, I understand it. Amazing Ibis, you can get results. Just learn that tap to focus lock. You might be onto something. I would probably recommend the G9 if you're in micro loser town or the S5 if you want to go full frame. When it comes to lenses, don't kid yourself. You can't go this wide outside because it wobbles. You can't go wide on a Panasonic. The 8 to 18, fantastic. I've never seen colors in a camera like that. The Leica, I was like, wow, but it's wobbly. I kept getting complaints. So I was like, oh, I can't even use that. You have to go with the 12 mil. It's on the Olympus, so we'll switch to that soon. But that 12 mil 1.4 gives a magical image outside, it's stable. Sometimes it performs in autofocus, but that's Panasonic's problem. You never know when it's gonna go haywire. You can't trust it, just like a hooker making a sandwich. I'll never make that mistake again. You'd think they'd be good at it. Where were the pickles? Yeah. Just know this, you can't go wrong almost with any system. You can get the results on YouTube. You could use a Samsung S4. We might switch to that thing. I'm waiting for a call though. Package on its way. You wait for the surprises ahead. Oh, you could do a lot worse than Panasonic, but I have to punish them for their stubbornness and autofocus. I can't recommend it, even though they're the best. The second worst company, probably the worst to buy into this ecosystem is a life decision gone wrong, is the Canon system of life. Even though this camera is performing adequately in every way. 
We're on the Canon SX50. It's a bridge camera and we're in 30p on a 24p timeline. So don't don't complain when things get weird. The autofocus so smooth. Dual pixel autofocus. Wasn't even invented yet, but it didn't need to be. I have to be honest with you, after using the Canon R5 and R6 over the course of two weeks, I was so disappointed in every aspect you would ever need to work properly. The IBIS was super shaky. The autofocus was losing me constantly. Every camera I pitted up against outperformed it. This Olympus Micro Four Loser sensor crushed it. It absolutely crushed the R6. I couldn't believe it. It didn't lose me once. Only when the Shoppers Drug Mart windows was just all whiteness and they're like, Olympus wanted to leave this earth and go to the heavens and I don't blame them. But man, obviously you can get amazing results with a Canon, the M50 with the Sigma 16 mil, perfect for YouTube basically. But the reason they rank so low on my list is because of the purposeful cripples and they know they do it and they're lying to your face when they say they don't. They want to protect their cinema line, that's it. And they just put all these weird things, oh, you can't auto expose and see log, sorry about that. We just leave the highlights there. You can raise the shadows. No, you can't. There's a reason when you hit two years old as a human being, you're considered a terrible person. And Canon made two cameras, twins. They're terrible. I don't know where that was going. The fact that their only wide lens weighs 15 pounds and wobbles everywhere, and then if you want to bring it in here, it's only a 2.8. Give me a break. Look at the tone it back there. Is there any tone? Not even here. That's a, that's a bitch. Advantage me. Oh, oh God. Come on. I'm still not far enough away. I honestly don't understand when people recommend Canon cameras for YouTubers. They just get the worst results. They have the worst dynamic range possible. So your image looks cheap. The autofocus at times in your living room is okay, but you challenge it and it loses your ass. I remember the M50 versus the J85 and the M50 was hunting in a forest. I was like, this ain't the shit. If you don't mind buying into a company of lies, then obviously I would probably go with the M6 Mark II and the Sigma system, the trio. Pick your focal length, probably 30 mil, 1.4 for YouTube, back it off a notch. Be pretty good, the 16 mil might be fun. That same focal length as this. You could do it. It wouldn't be very stable outside for the vlogs though. And their 11 to 22 is bullshit, no stabe. That's shit stabe. Full frame wise, you go with the R. The R is better stabilized with that 15 to 35. The IBIS ruins it. And you still, you can't really use the 10 bit C log anyway. What computer could handle it? It costs more than a thousand dinosaurs. Trust me, I've looked into it. Same price. But there's so many better systems than anything Canon. So I wouldn't recommend them. I'd probably recommend the G9 over the Canon. Honestly, totally just manual focus, you hobo. There's two companies that didn't even make my list and one that you're witnessing, but they went out of business. The Samsung NX1 honestly beats everything pretty much when it comes to dynamic range, sharpness, autofocus. It's still the best system, but it has its quirks and you can't like buy new lenses really. You have to look for used shit on eBay. It's a problem. And it has an amazing hand detect autofocus that's not gonna work now and make me look like a moron. Thank you. If Samsung ever decided to come back and make the NX2, it would destroy everything. Life on the planet, most likely. It's the best thing ever. And it's a fantastic camera. I love it. But the two companies that don't even make the list, Pentax, the best they can do is 1080p, 30p line skipped with Panasonic, not even, underachieved Panasonic autofocus with weird ass vintage looking lenses made by your grandfather. Not quite Pentax. Pentax is 100% focused on photographers and photographers are losers. We know that. Unbelievable. Stacy, that's a nice skirt. Pull it up a little bit on the side. No, that's too much. I have a wife. 
smile, make this, do this, and then the sun will bounce off your hand, it'll reflect to the... Do it. Oh no, the highlights were overexposed. I used a Canon camera against my better judgment. I can't sell the photo, so I can't pay you. I'm sorry. I do have some Tic Tacs. I have chewed on them previously. I spit them back in. Do you, you don't want. Lose. <laughs> Why'd I look at the stupid cannon? <laughs> and Leica also falls into this category of nobodies. Their SL2, it looks pretty amazing, but they're just so overpriced for worse functionality than any other system. What the hell? I keep looking at this as if I'm filming it, you piece of shit. So Leica is just a dumb investment. It's when rich people don't research the things they buy. It's like, oh, that's the most expensive. It must be the best. You're morons. My third worst company is Nikon, even though they might be the best. They could be. All these camera companies could be the best for you. Maybe you're a Canon shooter and you love not being able to see anything in the sky because you're afraid of dying. You're afraid of what the big man upstairs thinks of you. I understand. But Nikon, they got no flippy screen. And that's basically the only reason. They don't function in the real world. I'll be honest with you, that Nikon Z50 looked fantastic. I enjoyed it. The colors got weird in the shade. That was the weirdest thing about that camera. You get into the shade, then it, it ramps up exposure and changes the white balance and the colors got weird. But for the most part, colors are decent. Stabilization looks good with that new 14 to 24, 2.8. It's lighter than the Canon. 15 to 35 though. Stabilize good. Autofocus amazing, colors good. No flippy screen, you ruined your life. And there's not one coming on the horizon. They're making all these, like the Z6S, it's barely better. Sometimes worse in other ways. They're not innovating enough. They might be going out of business. I think they, I predicted 2021, December. It could happen. I don't want it to happen. There's just something about Nikon that seems off. Like you have meat in the fridge and it's been there for four days. You smell it, it's like, hmm. could you get away with it? Maybe, that's, that's on you. Same with the Nikon system. It's like, eh, they're okay. They're not like better at anything than anyone else. They're just good. They don't cripple anything on purpose. It's a decent system, but eh. If you were buying Nikon, I would go with the Nikon Z6, full frame glory, 20 mil 1.8. You could have YouTube Studio, you just need this mirror hack. Then eh, you can get away with it kind of annoying, but out in the street, you can't really use that. It's just so stupid and it's kind of heavy. You could get away with, like Nikon will expose and autofocus for you. So you have a wide enough lens, you could do it. It's not terrible. Still, your third worst. Now my fourth worst company of the six could be considered the best, like all the others. It's Olympus and you're witnessing her glory. You shouldn't even be allowed. Run the Leica 12mm 1.4. This, you need an Olympus lens for the perfect autofocus outside. This has the most confident autofocus outside of Sony. Outside. That matters. You can't watch a test in here and some dickhead's like, oh, look at that. Oh, good autofocus. Look, Panasonic's better than Sony now. No, they're not. Outside, when the light changes, contrast, sun's behind you, now it's to your left. Things fall apart hard. Fuji, I'm 100% confident in here. No problem, it gets me every time even with their worst autofocusing lenses. But outside, there's only one lens, that kit lens, that can hold me. You can't hold me, I'm a cage tiger. Honestly though, Olympus is the sleeper company. I just, I rank them a little lower because they don't focus on video. Hopefully they will be, they said they will be. But right now they have 8-bit, 4K, 24P. Like nothing exciting. Their slow-mo is the worst in the game. That's unfortunate. That hurts. But they're one of the only companies that can stabilize wide angle lenses for vlogging. Fantastic. Sony and Olympus can do it with their digital stabe. Every other company 
don't even think about it. In my opinion, Olympus has the most real to life colors. They're just so fantastic. The red's always red and just things look good. Perfect. Just a little low dynamic range. I'm in flat right now. It could be good enough. It might not be. But the autofocus. If you were thinking of getting into Olympus, it's a bit of a gamble because we don't know if they're going to stay in business or not. This new firm, it's like they're talking a good game now. It's like, oh, we're coming out with raw. That's fantastic. But I'd probably go with the EM1 Mark II over this because all you really get in this is slow motion, 120 frames per second, and it's almost unusable. It's single autofocus, so you have to be within arm's reach to press the trigger and focus, and then it just doesn't look very good. It hurts. But the Olympus with that 8mm fisheye, and you correct it, it looks pretty good. The 12mm Tony II, I, I still... I should have bought it when I saw it on sale for 600. Someone was selling it and I was like, eh, do I need it? I kind of think I did. And I missed my opportunity and now I'm waiting. There's one guy in Calgary that has it for 550, but he won't send it. So Olympus is good. They're highly recommended. I hold them in high esteem. They're one of the best for video, even though they don't even try. But just know you're getting 8-bit loser files that break up into two minute clips. The preamps are shit record externally with a Tascam DR10L available down below <laughs> in a theater near you. I was honestly shocked to see this thing outperform the R6 in low light. Like it didn't lose me in the darkest shadows and there wasn't much noise. Like I don't know if they have better noise reduction or what. Just a fantastic little beast of a machine. It's pretty light, has one of the best grips. It's a great system. That's why they rank pretty high. They could be number one really, but there's a couple things I prefer on the Fuji way of life. Oh, little Fuji, when everyone else goes to sleep, you're still working because you have the work ethic of a hamster. I got to be honest with you. The Olympus outperforms this in most key scenarios. It has better stabilization, more confident autofocus. I prefer the colors. The only reason I have Fuji ranked higher is because of their amazing 240 frames per second HD, which is not as good as the Sony's, but is still amazing. In fact, when I point the Fuji at anything, it just knows. Butterflies, yep. Squirrel, okay. We got you. Whereas the Sony seemed a little, it didn't know what to do. Best on I could have tapped to track, which I can't do in here. So user error hard. But there's something about the Fuji. The dynamic range and the colors, fantastic. I just prefer the Fuji. I would reach for it in a fire over the Olympus. It's just that slow motion. It's so much better. And the exposure is much faster too. It always exposes for the face and you can't even change metering modes. It just does it perfectly all the time. And now it doesn't step. It's really good. It's not without its flaws. Autofocus can be really unreliable with most of their best lenses. Eventually one day, maybe they'll make some lenses, but Viltrox got you covered. This is my favorite lens for the system. It's very reliable in here. It's pretty smooth now. It's good enough. You got the flippy screen, IBIS that kind of does stuff. Not very much. Pretty light, affordable, kind of. Whenever I battle this camera versus any other full frame or anything, people prefer the Fuji. It's the colors and the dynamic range and it's, it outperformed the Canons, and it's cheaper. The Sony people, a lot of people preferred the Fuji to the Sony, not in some situations. The Sony took over pretty hard, especially when I corrected the white balance from its weird Sony reptilian warm. They like to hive in a nest. It's not right. So if you're thinking of getting into the Fuji system, the X-T4 all the way because it has the flippy screen and IBIS. X-T3, eh, why bother? And this is one of the better hybrid cameras that actually take photos without overheating your video mode. 26 megapixels, the colors look good, just JPEGs. I tried street photography the other day. I made one. I got one. Here's a random man on a bench. I walked by him and I saw his glory and I figured I'd make him famous. He was unaware of how beautiful he was about to look, but the Fuji colors made it happen. I was walking home after making that Fuji 50mm versus 56mm video and I had the 50mm on my camera and I was like, I want to do street photography and every time someone walked by me, I'm like, I can't do it. I'm bothering you, I'm sorry. 
and then that guy he wasn't paying attention so I just I stopped I pointed it at him took a quick I didn't like try to focus oh, I'll get just Fuji knew I just uh, wasn't level at all but we got it and that was classic neg just the colors I love classic neg for photos fantastic so Fuji and Olympus are very close, it's just Fuji has the 10-bit and better dynamic range in slow-mo, so I do lean them. But we all know that our reptilian overlord ancestors have given us gifts this year. Crumbs, no longer. Full cake. Full cake has been given. Sony did it. Sony's done it. They've ended my existence. It's perfect. I'm nitpicking. The mode dial was the only thing I could find. And you have to press it. It'll strengthen your fingers. You'll be able to point at people and like, what, buddy? They'll fall. You could argue that the color science still isn't perfect straight out of camera, but it's improved. And a lot of user... A Sony user just switched to Canon and he had a heart attack. I would too. It wasn't worth it. Every weak point they had, they improved. The Ibis was the worst, now it's the best. With the digital crop, it works on wide lenses where Canon can't do it. No camera company can't even the Micro Four Thirds. Only Olympus with their digital crop can handle it. So it's like Sony and Olympus. Olympus, to do that crop, it's a 2.36 times crop now. That's significant. Sony's just 1.1, a little bit. Best autofocus in the business, hands down. It's so confident and smooth. It's just the greatest, but it's expensive as shit. Sony a7S III, I think in Canada, it's over five grand. It's like $5,500, unless you go to camera camp. There, they'll give you a discount if you use coupon code Please, I think that's like 80% off. Don't quote me on that. Back in the day when I was buying my first camera ever, I was filming on the Canon SD1100 IS. It was 480p, no autofocus. I was like, I wanna upgrade. And so I was doing research and I wanted autofocus because that one, my prior camera couldn't do it. And it was Sony that was leading even back then in their point and shoots, it was so smooth and fast. Like I was on myself and then filming a muffin. Oh, look at that, look at that, and back on me. Sony knows what they're doing. They have the best tech, they have no soul. So you have to break your finger in a mode dial-like fashion. But they've done it. They have AI technology that replicates a soul, and it's pretty good. Unfortunately, if you back down in price, you're back to like A7 III, A7 C, worst stab in the business. That hurts, unless you use their gyro shit, which takes you, oh, just add an extra hour, two hours to every video. Uh, no problem, I'll edit it at midnight. You're a loser. But you could get away even with their APS-C. For this type of video, A6400 with the Sigma 16 mil, you're good to go. A 30 mil, it would look almost identical to this. Cheaper, even. Better autofocus. Similar dynamic range. So in my opinion, Sony right now is the best, even though you pay for it. And then if you want to back it down a notch in price, the Fuji or the Olympus, you're good to go. Don't even think about a Canon. Everybody will switch to Pentax in the future from Canon, guaranteed. Panasonic, if you're a hobo, you could do worse. And for the action cams, we know GoPro can't be trusted. I just watched Authentech. He makes good reviews. And he's like, oh, this thing's glitching. It glitched on him like 10 times in his video. It's like, oh, it kept freezing. GoPro is shit. Even though they have amazing specs, I can't trust them. DJI, you're not in focus. You really have to go back to the X3000. That's the only way you can get a vlogging camera. I'm really hoping that DJI comes out with the Mark II of that action. Hopefully it happens and they realize, oh, need to be in focus here. We're not. So let me know down below if you disagree in any area. Who do you think is the best? Who's leading the industry for video? Not photos. 
that's an amazing tree. Oh my god, oh, I can't, I can't get the whole thing in the shot. I'll zoom out. Oh, it's a prime. Oh, oh why didn't I buy the zoom lens? Oh. So I'm going to leave. Let me know which camera performed best today in your hobo living room and which system you think is best for video, blogger, life. And that's it. Thanks for buying a camera conspiracies t-shirt. Subscribe for more videos. Bye. Bye.